Hi everyone, this video will be short. I'm going to show you how you can use Shiny modules. We're going to learn how Shiny modules work by rewriting an app that didn't use Shiny modules before into an app that uses Shiny modules now. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's first take a look at the app that we want to refactor here. It's a really simple app that I've built for demo purposes. Basically, you can take two variables from the Penguins data set and uh, draw a scatter plot for two of the variables and you can do the same thing for the iris data set and each data set gets its own tab set panel so that everything is on a separate page all right so the logic and the ui of this app is really the same on each page so it would be great if we wouldn't have a lot of duplicated code but as you can see here the ui of each uh, tab set panel looks pretty much the same. This is the one of the penguins data set and this is the one for the iris data set. And as you can see here, it's the exact same UI code, but the variable names are just different here. I had to append penguins every time and on the second one I had to append iris every time so that the IDs are unique. You can imagine that this uh, gets tedious really fast. So let's um, um, try to refactor it. So our app uh, can be easily extended to more than two data sets and we do not have to keep track of these uh, um, silly variable names. Okay, so I will just copy and paste everything into a new file and then I will take the um, UI function of the first tab set panel, which is the duplicated part, and then I want to throw that into a shiny module. To create the skeleton of a shiny module, I'll just type shiny mod in RStudio and press enter and the snippet will automatically throw a skeleton for me and now i can rename it in this case i will just call it plot U uh, plot ui and plot server as you can see a module consists out of two um, out of two parts the ui part and the server part and uh, we need to fill each part accordingly let's start with the ui part by copy and pasting the part that we duplicated part that we took from the UI and throw that into the tag list of the uh, module fun module UI. The first thing we can do is to get rid of all these uh, stupid penguins uh, uh, IDs here or the penguins in the IDs because this part will be handled for us by the NS function here. So the NS function does exactly what what we did manually. It appends an ID at the end of the variable name at the ID name that we want. So if we call this a UI function and uh, call it with an ID say penguin, then it would uh, will wrap all the it will append penguin at all the IDs here. So really, it is what we have done manually but it just takes care of that for us. Okay, now that we've done that, we can just throw, use this function in our um, tab set panel and we call that with the ID penguin and we do the same thing for the iris data set. So let's do iris here and we do iris over here. And now calling the function we notice that, okay, let me close it and restart it. Shouldn't work. As you can see, the uh, server side logic doesn't work at all, but it looks the same on both sides now, on both tab set panels, which is good. But notice that on the iris tab set panels, it uses the variables from the penguins data set, and that's because our UI function hard coded that. So instead of hard coding that, let us make this dependent on a data set variable that we put into our function here as well. And then we just need to uh, put the correct data sets into the function whenever we call it in a tab set panel. So this will be the two data sets, iris and pharma penguins, penguins that we call. And now on the penguin side of things, the variables are correct, but on the and on the iris side of things, also the variables are correct. Now let's finish up, uh, finish up this app by making the server work. It, finishing that or uh, making that work is pretty much the same 
as we did with the UI, we just take the duplicated code and throw that into our module server function. Notice that we need to throw this into the innermost function. And then we do exactly the same thing. We get rid of all the um, yeah, appended ID tags. And that's pretty much it because we also call this server function with an ID and the ID that we give should be the same as we declared over here. So this server function will automatically choose the correct variables depending on the ID. But of course, this needs to be uh, dependent on a data set again, just like our UI. So let's uh, yeah, add that. And now really we just call this uh, server function, server module function, and we do this two times, one time for penguins and one time for iris. And now this server logic should also work on both sides. And yeah, we have successfully refactored our code. Notice how small our uh, code base became for the uh, full app. Uh, that's because we have really taken the core part and put that into a function. And the beautiful thing about this, we can easily um, extend this to even more data sets. So for instance, we could take the diamonds data set, which is in the ggplot package. And we could also take the mpg data set, which is... Um, also in the ggplot package and just um, do the same thing on the server function. And now if I call that app, we have successfully um, extended our app even for more data sets and that's the power of shiny models uh, modules. So yeah, that's how they work. All right, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also check out the description of this video because I'm going to put some helpful resources in there as well. So that being said, I hope that you have a nice day and I will see you next time.